Hello everybody, Maven here, and I'm a hunter main, but I decided to go through the final shape campaign on my warlock first, because I wanted to unlock prismatic warlock abilities as quick as possible, because I know prismatic warlock is the strongest prismatic character out of all three characters, and today's build accurately sums up why that is. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you might recognize in the past month I've uploaded two different prismatic warlock build videos using the getaway artist exotic gloves, but it doesn't end there. This is gonna be the third. Yes, I did play test Prismatic a couple weeks ago and I got to try it out and Getaway Artist is definitely insane. But now that the final shape's fully released, I got more time to test it out and I have perfected the build and it is beyond nasty. So I'm gonna ask you this, if you are planning on building around the Bleak Watcher turrets, what exotic are you going to use? You're gonna use the Osmiomancy gloves, right? Wrong, there's a new kid in town. You're gonna use the Getaway Artist and I will explain why. So let's get to it. Hope you enjoy. Now, as you can see by the background gameplay, if you're in any situation where ads are spawning, period, you can effortlessly have about four to six Bleak Watcher turrets on the battlefield at any given time. Now, the Osmiomancy gloves are fine, don't get me wrong, and when you're on Prismatic, you can pair them along with the Feed the Void aspect to get that super devour, get tons of grenade energy off that, spam more Bleak Watchers but it's gonna be hard to proc devour on an Osmiomancy build because your Bleak Watchers aren't really going to pick up a lot of ability final blows. They're there to just freeze things. So you're basically relying on your charged melee ability, which you won't always have up because with this build, you're not gonna invest 100 strength, obviously. But with the Getaway Artist, when you consume your grenade, you get a Bleak Watcher, but you also get that Sentient Arc Soul. And I don't know if you ever used a Sentient Arc Soul in PvE before, but they absolutely slap and make it absolutely free to get that devour like immediately when you cast it. So the getaway artist version is just so much more powerful and consistent than the Osmiomancy version. I'm telling you, Osmiomancy is a thing of the past. Now devour is not the only thing feeding us grenade energy and that brings us to our first fragment here, facet of balance. And what we care about on facet of balance is that rapid darkness final blows grant us grenade energy. And all of that freezing and shattering we're doing with our bleak watcher turrets is counting as rapid darkness final blows feeding us more grenade energy and you might have already noticed but the weapon of choice of this build is the Aegir Scepter. Now you can use whichever weapon you want, it doesn't really matter, but I'm choosing to use the Aegir Scepter because it just got a huge buff, 20% more damage to minors and majors, plus it does a lot of freezing and shattering as well, contributing to our rapid darkness final blows. It is a master at clearing out trash mobs. And for our next fragment, we got Facet of Ruin, increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a frozen enemy, which this build is obviously doing every single two seconds. And also, I don't know if you saw the patch notes, but they also doubled the damage that shattering frozen enemies does from two 200 to 400. So that's why this build is really hitting hard. And our next fragment is Facet of Courage. Your Arc, Solar, and Void abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted with darkness debuffs. And yes, slowing and freezing counts as darkness debuffs. So your Arc Soul is gonna do increased damage to all of those targets. And how much damage, you may ask? Well, let's conduct a little test here. Our Arc Soul is doing just over 2,000 damage to these Legionaries. And we're gonna try that again with a Bleak Watcher out, freeze them, and now we're doing just over 2,300. So it appears to be around a 15% damage buff. And our next fragment is Facet of Dawn. Ain't nothing wrong with going Radiant. And our final fragment is Facet of Purpose. Picking up an Orb of Power grants us a plethora of potential abilities here. I'm personally using Nova Bomb, so I'm getting overshields when I pick up Orbs of Power. I could also see going with Needle Storm. That's a pretty good super. It would give you Woven Mail. That's not bad. Also, if you want to use the new Song of Flame and give you Restoration, all pretty solid options. It really depends on your play style. But personally, I like Nova Bomb right now because they just gave it a huge buff. However, I could potentially see replacing that fragment with facet of devotion defeating targets afflicted with stasis or strand debuffs grants bonus light transcendent energy now dark energy is not an issue at all for this build because the amount of freezing and shattering we're doing we're getting so much dark energy but light energy is a little bit of an issue so devotion could help remedy that problem but i have not yet unlocked it when i do i'll be trying it out though now taking a look at our mod setup here it's very stasis weapon oriented we got stasis siphon stasis loader stasis reserve stasis scavenger we even have the infinite special ammo setup which is a copy of charged up on the chest 
stacks on stacks on the boots and special finisher on the class item. And that makes it so you basically have infinite Aegir Scepter ammo. If you're running out, you simply just go perform a finisher and then you're just one orb away from being able to perform it again. That's what the charged up is for. And because of the stasis oriented mod setup, my heavy of choice was another stasis weapon. I was using the Typhon GL5 because there's not really too many other good stasis heavies. I was using the slammer, but it was frustrating because Eager Edge was failing on me for some reason. It was like bugging out. But you can really go with any mod setup you want. You can go with like a surge setup if you choose. Uh, you can really do anything. But this setup's been working out for me and make sure my Aegir Scepter feels smooth and never runs out of ammo. Now for our stats setup, the thing that matters most is just having 100 resilience and 100 discipline and having a minimum of three intellect. And then I just dump the rest into recovery and strength. Now for the primary in my energy slot, I rarely ever pull it out to use it because I'm just maining Aegir Scepter 99% of the time. Um, but it is a staccato issue to loot and explosive payload. You can use whatever though, it really doesn't matter. And you could also use whatever heavy you want. It doesn't have to be stasis. And that about does it for the build. It's absolute madness. If you're a warlock main, you better not pass this one up. You gotta give it a try. And I dare say this build is bordering on the term broken. The forbidden term in the Destiny YouTube sphere. Some Destiny YouTubers may spam that word in every video they create, and others choose to only use it when absolutely necessary. And I say this build potentially warrants the term broken. So as always, the dim loadout link will be down below in the description and also the pinned comment if you would like to give it a try. And if you got any buddies who are Warlock mains, I highly recommend you share this video with them because every Warlock player has to try this build, trust me. And I hope Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment because it helps out the algorithm. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing because we got a lot of juicy final shape builds on the way. So stay tuned for that and I will catch you in the next video. See you later.